Lifting the Veil Part Number 3 They fulfill the will of the gods by means of storms, tempests, transitions of fire, and earthquakes, likewise by famines and wars, for the punishment of impiety. For the greatest crime of men is impiety towards the gods. The gods are planets. The nature of the gods is to do good, the duty of men is to be pious, the function of the genii is to chastise. The gods do not hold men responsible for faults committed through mistake or boldness, by that necessity which belongs to fate, or by ignorance, only iniquity falls under the weight of their justice. It is the sun who preserves and nourishes all creatures, and even as the ideal world which environs the sensible world fills this last with the plenitude and universal variety of forms, so also the sun enfolding all in his light accomplishes everywhere the birth and development of creatures, and when they fall wearied in the race, gathers them again to his bosom. Under his orders is the choir of the genii, or rather the choirs, for there are many and diverse, and their number corresponds to that of the stars. Every star has its genii, good and evil by nature, or rather by their operation, for operation is the essence of the genii. In some there is both good and evil operation. All these genii preside over mundane affairs, they shake and overthrow the constitution of states and of individuals, they imprint their likeness on our souls, they are present in our nerves, our marrow, our veins, our arteries, and our very brain substance, and in the recesses of our viscera. At the moment when each of us receives life and being, he is taken in charge by the genii who preside over births, and who are classed beneath the astral powers. Perpetually they change, not always identical, but revolving in circles. They permeate by the body two parts of the soul, that it may receive from each the impress of his own energy. But the reasonable part of the soul is not subject to the genii, it is designed for the reception of God, who enlightens it with a sunny ray. Those who are thus illumined are few in number, and from them the genii abstain, for neither genii nor gods have any power in the presence of a single ray of God. But all other men, both soul and body, are directed by genii, to whom they cleave, and whose operations they affect. But reason is not like desire, which deceives and misleads. The genii, then, have the control of mundane things, and our bodies serve them as instruments. Now, it is this control which Hermes calls destiny. So if you had your veil lifted and you can understand that what's happening to our world with the corona is caused by the sun to discipline us. That is our destiny. You now perhaps understand and have realized what my edict is, you either heard it or read it. But you can't say you didn't get it. So tear off that veil of ignorance for it is a very black darkness and come into the light. Jesus can't save you, he chose to follow the path of his God. Do you remember what he said? Look at what is said and you decide. Here, let's lift your veil a bit, to understand just what kind of person Jesus really was. It's written and no one can escape this. Notice at Matthew 28 18, Jesus came and told his disciples, 
I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. He can't say his God gave him that authority because his God was dead when he said that. But his true character is shown and what kind of person he really was is this. Notice, Luke 1927, but those my enemies, which would not want that I should reign over them, bring here, and slay them before me. Ah, there you go another killer god like the god of Israel. Wow. If Marduk would have been alive and heard him say that, Marduk would have been amused. So if you understand, a lot of that darkness that harnesses the soul, are just plain simple religious lies like what preachers and teachers tell people because they are under control of some darkness. Now, if you lift the veil over your eyes, you will meet God. Hermes says, Holy is God, that determines to be known, and is known of his own, or those that are his. For God, and the Father, and the Good, is neither spoken nor heard. He will appear to the eyes of your mind. But the first step towards wisdom is to understand what is false, the second, to ascertain what is true. Knowledge of God descended to us, and when it arrived, it was rejected by ignorance. Knowledge of joy descended to us, and when it arrived, sadness fled completely from those willing to receive it. Keep though not silent when evil is spoken for truth like the sunlight shines above all. The foundation of knowledge is supreme goodness. The spirit governs and gives life to all that is in the world, it is an instrument employed by the will of the sovereign God. Thus we ought to comprehend, by intelligence alone, the supreme intelligible called God. By him is directed that secondary sensible God, who contains all spaces, all substances, the matter of all that engenders and produces, in a word, all that is. Second God, Milky Way, but the intelligence of the Divine Being, the consciousness of the Supreme God, is the only truth, and this truth cannot be discovered, nor so much as its shadow, in this world full of illusion, of changeful appearances, and of error, where things are known only in the dimension of time. He said, clear is the pathway to he who has wisdom. Open the door to the kingdom of light. Come on, lift the dark veil of ignorance and walk the road that leads you to a great kingdom. It's God's kingdom and he has already decorated it just for your eyes.